So everyone, Titan Season 2, Episode 4, Aqualad, was probably my favorite episode in the whole series so far. I mean, before that, it was probably the Hawk and Dove flashback episode in Season 1. And in today's review and breakdown, of course, we're going to go over everything that was just incredible about having a whole episode dedicated to the flashbacks of the original Titans. But the thing is, immediately starting off this review, there seems to be a little bit of a pattern going on here in the terms of how Titan seems to do its absolute best when it focuses on the episode on the old titans from years ago now you may personally not agree with that and this isn't to say that i'm not enjoying the titans 2.0 and what the show has been up until now especially with dick grayson leading the new titans his journey into becoming nightwing and making a family that can mirror the family dynamic that was you know even seen in this episode but the thing is i'm sure a lot of you or at least some of you are watching this episode and are perhaps feeling as though you're kind of having an inkling like perhaps the show should have started out with something like like this in terms of five years ago with that version of the Titans with their amazing dynamic and chemistry between each other because it was truly that it, it was just amazing but as usual everyone before we get into the details of episode 4 Aqualad uh, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you're enjoying the reviews I just want to say a quick thank you to all of the support on the Titans reviews last week's uh, episode Ghosts uh, hit past 50k almost 2,000 likes which is absolutely insane for me so uh, just thank you to all the new Titans fans on the channel and just go ahead to leave a like that's the best way you can help out this channel if you're enjoying these videos it, every like really does help get this video out there a little bit more um, but let's get into this so episode 4 Aqualad has everything I feel like a big fan of this show wants and when I say everything I mean most likely everything if you're into this menacing and scarily good portrayal of SI Morales's Deathstroke we got more of that and of course we would because you know we already had uh, or at least we already knew there was a big link with him him and the old titans. I mean I just love that beginning part of the episode where Deathstroke had all of his weaponry laid out in that room, proceeding to assassinate people where no one seemed to be safe, whether that's from prisoners to lawyers to even judges so it seemed, and Slade was really living up to his Terminator name, like some of those kills were brutal, it was just showing him in his element before he retired himself to that cabin we saw in episode 1. Now the excellent thing is that all of this was accompanied by some montage music that kind of made it feel very chilling yet freakishly great seemed like it was just a normal walk in the park for Slade Wilson which you know to be honest if you know his character it probably was just a, a normal day for him. Now this for any Deathstroke fan as dark as the scenes were was just pure gold but this is when Slade gets delivered a weird assignment you know weird is what I believe he called it and of course guys this links to the very tragic scene which we had later on in the episode and yeah don't don't even get me started on that because yeah I, I I mean, I guess we're going to get to it, but Jesus. Now, at this beginning point in the episode, guys, this is when we saw the original Titans kick some ass uh, and, and have some amazing action. And to be honest, this whole episode just really felt like not only a perfect episode in my eyes for the reasons I've already stated and will go on to say. I mean, everything just felt so well organized and felt like the perfect recipe for a premise of a Titans prequel show, if you will. It just honestly felt like a lot more cooler and engaging with this cast and where they were just at in each point of the characters lives but once again guys I'm not going to nor trying to negate that we won't get there with the other characters such as Raven, Gar, Connor Kent and the others it's just that Minka Kelly, Alan Richson, Brenton Thwaites, Connor Leslie and lastly the amazing addition of Drew Van Acker as Aqualad are just a group I need to see more of in episodes just like this but as I spoke about in last week's review with what we were teased of in episode 3 it was Aqualad's birthday who had only been with the Titans for four months at this point. So don't read into this too much yet, but that infers that Dick Grayson and the others had been operating in the Titans Tower before four months ago when Garth joined. So what I'm trying to say is for those holding out hope for Roy Harper and Wally West, helping out the Titans from time to time before then, have something to grasp onto. And I have to admit, it was a little bit weird seeing Dick and Dawn together as well in this, you know, five year flashback. And for a minute, I totally forgot that Dick and Dawn were a thing once before. So if you're finding yourself a little bit confused on the chronology of it all, Hank and Dawn did meet each other and become Hawk and Dove after that night they spent together as seen in the flashback episode in season one, but their relationship as put by Dick himself in the episode crashed 
and Burns shortly after that. And that's when Dawn and Dick got together, even though after the events of this five year flashback episode, Dawn then went back to Hank. By the way, it was funny seeing a drunk Hank and we got that octopus cake that was teased in episode three. And is anyone kind of hoping for a deleted scene of Robin offering and actually singing to Aqualad on his birthday? Because I, th I think there might be a petition now. But this is where we started getting into the very kind of awkward Donna Troy who had been suppressing her feelings for Garth as ultimately this episode set up a very powerful story for them. One that goes back years to when they were kids who had crushes on each other and now one of which that maybe shouldn't be acted upon by either individual which you know mainly consists of Donna just due to their destinies as hero as Garth will eventually need to go back to Atlantis and Donna who is in the more immediate period returning to Themyscira. So we got explanations for Donna fighting hard stay in San Francisco to remain with the Titans due to wanting her independence from Wonder Woman but ultimately Jillian knows Donna's request to head back sooner rather than later was to do with Garth and in terms of Jillian I, I couldn't reference anything with her specifically in the memory banks but you know judging by what we see with her later she's probably just like a badass long-standing Amazonian warrior. Also I loved how they kind of you know likened her and Donna into scenes with like an art gallery which is very reminiscent of Diana herself. But I thought the way their relationship was depicted in this episode with Garth and Donna Troy's long-standing affection for each other with lines such as I've been waiting for Donna Troy since I was 12. Now whether that was the scenes of Garth trying really hard to break through Donna's walls by getting her a drink that they had when they were younger which was a substitute to champagne since Diana aka Wonder Woman said they were too young for it. This just makes me really want to see more mini flashbacks to those days kind of like what we had in season one with uh, a mini Donna Troy and a mini Dick Grayson in Wayne Manor when uh, Wonder Woman came round because of something to do with the Joker. The bottom line here for me is that this world building is just so awesome to hear about and I'm just left with wanting more. Now also in this episode guys we got some more Dr. Light. I thought the exploration into his character and a little bit more backstory to him if you will if you're not so familiar with Arthur Light uh, was really really cool. I still really like Michael Mosley's iteration of this character with this episode seeing him go to Jacob Finley who in Arthur Light's mind built his work from the inside of Dr. Light's failures but the Titans had to stop him in this episode as this laser he was after would essentially make him like a walking nuclear bomb of energy. When we had the original Titans versus Dr. Light the action was just great. We even see Wonder Girl go toe to toe with Dr. Light and get tossed aside and to be honest I think that's pretty awesome showing an actual villain like Dr. Light managing to fend off Wonder Girl when I feel like most people would assume that ha huh, Wonder Girl get you know getting beaten or you know thrown aside by Dr. Light there's no chance. Now at this point Garth stepped out in front of Dr. Light and this is when he says the line you know you should have sang to me on my birthday it might have been your only chance or something like that and I was just like dude don't speak too soon, please. And, you know, I didn't know this for a fact, but if you watched my last, you know, review, I theorized, like many other people, given what that episode teased us with, with the airport Deathstroke flashbacks, I, I knew s something bad was going to happen. And so Aqualad defended the incoming Light Blast. This was just all so awesome, which led into a team sequence all together against Dr. Light. And so Dr. Light was kind of stopped from this finishing blow from Robin. Now, this was a pure titan scene we need more of this precisely this now there were some cool scenes in episode season one in like the parking lot of like the hotel when we had beast boy and raven just all there and like robin just huffing and puffing like that was cool but i still feel like that kind of has nothing on this <laughs> this is what i mean about the titans of old like maybe there should be a prequel show or maybe this is kind of how it should have started this is where we're reaching towards the near end of the episode and if you couldn't tell already i know some people love this and know some people really don't like it but this this is going to be a bit of a longer video because I have quite a bit of a theory extension onto the Jericho stuff uh, towards the end of this review. So stick around for that if you want to hear a lot more uh, insight into the Deathstroke arc and what the sins of the old Titans might be uh, and all of that good stuff. But with this part, we had that moment back in the Titans Tower on the night that Donna would return to Demoscira. And finally, Donna gave in and both Garth and Donna had their moment. I felt like this scene was really, really satisfying just given with how they set up the the story for these two characters and their feelings for each other just with the context
context of how long they've known each other. I mean, the music was really feelsy in this scene and just their chemistry together was great. I mean, of course, though, the whole time you're watching this, you just kind of know something bad was going to happen to Garth by the end. So ultimately, it's just a really bittersweet thing to watch happen, especially with how happy Garth was when he was talking to Dick in the Titans Tower, hearing him talk about that day he's been thinking about ever since he met her or whatever, uh, only to realize that she was already on her way to the airport. And this is the moment you've kind of all been waiting for in the episode. And finally, I'm talking about it in the review. Uh, Garth goes and confronts Donna in the most awkward way in front of of Jillian even though she secretly loves this because she has that little smile on her face as he's kind of saying how much he loves her. You can see how torn Donna is between a destiny and Aqualad as he confesses that he loves her, always have and always will. The energy and performance from both Connor Leslie and Drew Van Acker here was just absolutely heart-wrenching. I mean if you didn't feel anything here then you're not human. Seriously. Now, if you watched my episode 3 review last week, you'll see how I pointed out a theory of his impending death coming up in this episode when we were offered a very quick glimpse of a Deathstroke scene as Dick Grayson recalls the past. Now, this saw Deathstroke mounting a sniper at the airport, which I then linked to the scenes we saw from the trailer with, lo and behold, the same location. And just as Donna Troy more or less decides to stay and not leave for them Mascara for Garth, the gunshot sounds from Deathstroke and Garth turns very, very fast and gets hit by the I guess Atlantean piercing bullet. So it's not surprising to say that I saw this coming and I knew it'd be very sad to watch unfold but I was a lot more sad than what I anticipated and that's because Drew Van Acker's performance this episode was just absolutely incredible as Aqualad. And the interesting thing that I'm left you know after considering all of this and I would seriously love to hear your thoughts on this is that in that moment he gets shot and dies it just feels like a part of you even while acknowledging how much of a powerful moment this is in the show's overall plot that drives the characters forward for years to come, you're still left feeling as though it's a wasted character because Aqualad was great and Drew Van Acker was perfect to be more or less spent in one episode. I mean it's actually gutting to consider the potential that could have been if this was done differently and he didn't die, just given how awesome this episode was and how I spoke about all of this earlier. But then again it is sometimes extremely effective to have things like this happen. I mean, short but sweet is a phrase for a reason. But on another note, I would love to know who gave Deathstroke this weird contract. Either way though, Deathstroke fires again and tries to kill them all as he would try to cleanse the scene, but the MVP Jillian came to the rescue by splitting that bullet in two, which, you know, kind of gives you a bit more insight into who she could be. But everyone, if you're loving these flashbacks, this is not the last of the flashbacks that we're going to see. There are literally like two different timelines going throughout this season. Uh, the Titans learn who Deathstroke is on the Titans computer and this leaves the original Titans with a very big grudge against Slade for obvious reasons and now it makes more sense than ever why Dawn said that interesting line in the Titans season 2 full trailer which was now's the time be Batman because Batman would be freaking ruthless in a situation like this and you know I've seen lots of theories out there just very quickly side noting this I know Aquaman's a hero but like why wouldn't he want to not destroy Slade Wilson I mean is Slade R Wilson really that good that maybe Arthur Curry did try and go after him I'd love to hear references like that upcoming in this season because I just can't imagine that Aquaman wouldn't want to get some kind of vengeance for what happened. I, I need that address because if they don't address it, it's just going to be a bit weird. Uh, don't you think? Now, earlier on in the episode, we saw Jericho for the first time with Slade checking up on him. And I have to say, I'm already really drawn to Jericho and uh, the performance that Chella Man gave to uh, this character. I don't know. It's just that Chella's portrayal automatically just gives so much energy to the role. I, I was just instantly like, it it's, it's so likable. I and I can't wait to see more from this character in the future episodes. It's also very interesting to note that his origin Jin has already seemingly taken place at this point as well, just because he's got the scars in the five-year-old flashbacks, which I didn't really expect. However, though, it does seem like Jericho might be a flashback-only character, as I fear that I now realize what the sins of the old Titans may end up being. Now, I'm not saying that the old Titans will kill Jericho or anything like that, but I do believe that he may now die in the flashback storyline this season, which will continue to unfold throughout the episodes. I mean, there's even an episode called Jericho. 
And I'm just gathering this just through how things are being set up going forward, especially with that ending scene with the deceiving Dick Grayson meeting Jericho. So I think that the Titans will end up getting Jericho killed in one way or another, and it'll just be really sad. And I actually found myself feeling pretty sorry for him when Dick Grayson took him away, which, you know, usually wouldn't be something you'd feel when the Titans are handling their business, but that's the point. You're supposed to feel like the Titans aren't really trying to be the nice guys now when it comes, you know, to the, the vengeance for uh, Aqualad. Now, the interesting thing is as well, I feel like this also explains Deathstroke's actions in the present day scenes as well. I mean, at first you may think, hey, Deathstroke started all of this with killing Aqualad, so why is he triggered by seeing the Titans are back together again on screen through Jason Todd in that first episode? Well, you'd be right in saying that he started it, but regardless of that, he now might not ever be able to look past the fact that the old Titans potentially got his son killed after Aqualad died, who I feel to Slade, you know, Jericho was a part of his life, something that he just had hope to live completely outside the darkness that follows, you know, Deathstroke wherever he goes. Like, he's pretty locked into that life, even though he tried to get out of it in the cabin. He probably just tried to completely segregate, you know, his son, Jericho, out of that. And with whatever may happen, you know, it, it, that might completely crumble him uh, mentally and have nothing but hate and disdain for the Titans. Now, one last thing as well, just another theory. It might be even more disturbing than what we think just by gathering what Rose said to Dick Grayson and how Slade, her father, killed her older brother because he fell into the wrong crowd. Now ever since Rose said about this, I was thinking that this wrong crowd could be the Titans, you know, with the whole theories that Rose might betray them or something like that, but then still might not properly follow through with the betrayal and stay with them, whatever you think there. We could actually see Jericho fall in with them, despite how it appears right now with Dick Grayson kind of taking him at the end of the record store scene, as we know Jericho does have scenes with all of the Titans, and who knows, Slade might be so disgusted at that, and what Rose said could be true, like he might actually you know, put him down, but that'd be pretty messed up. But that is everything I've got to say about this episode. I know this was a longer video, uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway. And if you did, please leave a like on it. As I said at the beginning, it really does show your support for the channel. And it should go without saying, I'm absolutely dying to hear your thoughts on the Aqualad episode. What did you think of Drew? Do you think that maybe, just maybe, even if you're not fully committed to this like me, a little bit of, a little guilty part of you is thinking, what if they did start the show from this part? I mean, that would have been so cool. You can check out my past couple of recent videos here. Uh, check me out on Patreon below this, uh, Twitter and other things like that. Definitely check out my Discord server where you can talk about this episode with me personally. The link to the server will be in the top pinned comment. But thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you Titans in the next video. Goodbye.